So let's just go back now. So now we're going to go back to electromagnetism and we want to start studying special relativity in the context of electromagnetism. So we had the divergence of B is equal to 0. And this equation told us that B was the curl of A, right? So from this equation we learned that we can write B as the curl of A. What equation told us that we could write E as the gradient of a scalar potential? So before we had the curl of E was equal to 0. But is the curl of E equal to 0 one of Maxwell's equations? No. no. What should the curl of E be equal to? So if we write E as minus the gradient of a potential, this equation will not work because this side will be 0, but that side won't. Okay? So we're going to have to change our equation. However, there's a natural guess that you could make. So E is equal to minus the gradient of the potential. And now let's change it slightly, okay, so that it works. And, and you do a little bit of experimenting. I'm just going to tell you exactly what the change is, okay. And uh, the change is to say minus dA dt. So now the electric field uses both the electric potential and the vector potential. And let's see why does this work. Okay? So if we calculate the curl of E, okay, what is this equal to? This is the curl of minus the gradient of V minus dA dt. What is the curl of a gradient? Zero. Zero. So I don't need to worry about that term. And I just get left with this term. Minus, I've got the curl of dA dt. Now d by dt will commute with these partial derivatives. So I can write this as minus d by dt and I'll do the curl first. But what's the curl of A? B. Great. This definition for E works. So if I now write B as the curl of A and E as minus the gradient of V minus the A and T, what I learn is this one of Maxwell's equations is immediately true and Faraday's law is immediately true. So I can write things in terms of potentials and I have already solved two of Maxwell's equations. This one, okay, so there's my definition of E, there's my definition of B, and the only equations of Maxwell that I'm left with, there's only two of them now, There's one equation there, plus one equation there. Those are the only two equations I need to solve now. Okay. So I would need to write these two equations in terms of A and solve them. How many, if this is one vector equation, so how many equations is that? 
3. This is a scalar equation. How many equations is that? 1. How many equations in total? 4. What equation do you think this is going to be? 4 vector equation. Right? We've got 4 equations. So we'd expect this to be written as 1 4 vector equals another 4 vector. Okay? And we'll, we will see how that works uh, shortly. Okay. So now what I want to do is I want to combine K mu must combine V and A. Where should the C go? Okay, why, William? Okay, what are the units of V? Okay, this V is not velocity. What is this V? Potential. So what do we want? We want these two to have the same units, right? These two we had to add. So these two must have the same units. This is V over length and this is A over time. So A is time over length times by V. So A has the same dimensions as a velocity times V. Everyone happy with that? So that now tells us where to put in um, the factor of C. One over C or again I can put the C over there. Okay. C times by A. This now tells me A mu. What I can do now if I want, I can do a Lorentz transformation, and the Lorentz transformation will act on A mu the same way that it acts on X mu, the same way that it acts on P mu. Okay? The same Lorentz transformation will act on all of those. Good. Now so I'm now going to do um, what Emil wanted. clear why do we study this particular um, combination but that will become clear and the combination I want to study is F mu nu which is defined to be d mu a nu minus d mu a nu now I have told you what is a with the index up right how do you get a with the index down Oh, good. Not perhaps. Good. So, so, A with the index down, we get by contracting with the eta. Right? So, we know what A with the index up is, so we can calculate A with the index down. What I also need to tell you is, what is D with the index down? And D with the index down is, uh, so let me tell you what is, so, so, so for D mu, 
d naught is 1 over c d by dt. And the i is equal to the ith component of magma. So i can be 1, 2, or 3. Now, I want you guys to calculate what is this. d mu f mu nu. So I want to know what is that equal to. And so you need d with the index up. d with the index up would be eta mu nu d nu. And eta mu nu with the indices up is the same as eta mu nu with the indices down. So you would again take that matrix and multiply it into this quantity. Okay? So maybe let's start off, and I want you guys to calculate the follow. What is A mu? What is D mu? So let's start with that. If you are stuck, put up your hand and the tutor will help. Sorry? Okay, so I want to know what is a mu with the index down. Is that clear? And I want to know what is d mu with the index up. Does it make sense for you? No. Okay. So Okay. So if we say the first component of V, we mean the X. If we say the second component of V, that's V1. Does it make sense? What is <laughs> good? Good. Now what do you need to do? You need to take that matrix, 
which is 1 minus 1 minus 1 minus 1. And you need to multiply it into a vector, which is 1 over C, d by dt, d by dx, d by dy, d by dz. Make sense? Good. Okay, guys, who can tell me what are the components of A mu downstairs? First component. V. V. And then? Negative A vector. Anything else? C. C. Good. Very good. So those are the four components of A mu. So A naught would be V. And A1 would be minus the x component times by c. Good. What would d mu be? 1 on c, d, d, t. Good. Good. Negative tabula. Absolutely. So we've got those two. So in actual fact, we know what that quantity is. We know what each of these are because they are given over there. And we know what A with the lower indexes. It's given over there. Okay. Now I would like you guys to calculate what is this. So to do this, what do you need to do? You need to sum over mu going from 0 to 3. And you have to do this for different values of mu. So let's start off with mu is equal to 0. So if mu is 0, what do we have? If mu is equal to naught, we have to calculate d mu, f mu naught. What is that equal to? So there'll be a first term with naught, naught, second term, 1, 1, next term, third term, 2, 2, fourth term, 3, 3. And you sum them. Okay, guys, let's do one thing together, okay? So let's ask ourselves, first of all, what is F00? So let's see if we can get that. So where do I get F00 from? Good. So I mu is naught, nu is naught, okay? So this will be D naught, A naught, minus D naught, A naught, which is 0. So that is equal to naught. Now let's look at F naught 1. What is F naught 1? D naught A1 minus D1 D naught. What is D naught? 
1 over C, D by D, T. What is A1? Negative C, A, X component. Minus, what is D1? D by DX. What is A0? V. What is this? What is that? The x component of the electric field. Because the x component here will be minus d by dx of v. That's where it sits there. And minus d by dt of the x component of a. Minus d by dt of the x component of a. So this is the x component of the electric field. And uh, so, so you could continue. So you'll be able to check that F02 would be the Y component of the electric field. F03 should be the Z component of the electric field. Okay? So F01 is... X F naught two is E Y and F naught three is the Z component of the electric field. So when we look at this equation, E naught F naught naught plus D1, F, uh, 1 naught, plus two more terms. I want you guys to check and make sure. So here we've calculated F naught 1. You should check what is F1 naught. It's a very similar calculation. And what you can check is, and I want someone to tell me if I've got the sign right tomorrow. E mu. F mu naught should be equal to the divergence of E. So that's what I want you guys to check. And uh, we'll leave it now. When we start in class tomorrow, I want someone to tell me, did I get the sign right there? Okay? Or not? Good. Okay. Good. If when we start tomorrow, when we finish this off, so we're just going to be writing Maxwell's equations in relativistic form, I want you guys to ask if there's any questions. So please take a look at what we did, and if there's anything that's not clear, ask at the beginning of tomorrow's lecture. Once we've got the relativistic form of Maxwell's equations, it will be very easy for me to show you what is the formula for the strong nuclear force and the weak nuclear force, those are examples of gauge theories. So it's the relativistic form of the Maxwell equation that we want to write down. That's what will have a very easy generalization when we try to generalize it to the next term. Good. Okay, guys, so we're just about finished. There's two minutes left. So it's time for the joke. Okay. So this joke is, again, about a psychologist. And um, it's the same psychologist, and he's very interested with his results. So he decides now he's going to extend it. And he's not only going to study physicists and mathemat mathematicians, he's going to study a physicist, a mathematician, an engineer, a social scientist, an artist, an accountant, and another psychologist. So he gets them all together, and they're talking in a group. And he says to them, guys, I've got a simple question for you that I want you to think about. 
and I'm going to talk to you about it afterwards. So you can discuss it amongst each other, and then I will talk to you one on one. And the question that I want you to answer is, what is 2 plus 2? <laughs> so they start discussing and so on. After they finish discussing, they separate, and the psychologist starts to interview all of them. So he starts off with the physicist, and he says to the physicist, what is 2 plus 2? And the physicist says, I can't give you an exact value, but it is bigger than 3.8, and it is less than 4.1. I don't know the exact value. So the psychologist says, okay. Then he says to the mathematician, what is 2 plus 2? And the mathematician says, I've got no idea what 2 plus 2 is equal to, but I know that the answer exists. <laughs> then he speaks to the engineer and he says, what is 2 plus 2? And the engineer says, I calculated numerically, it's 4 and a half. Then he says to the psychologist, what is 2 plus 2? And the psychologist says to him, how does it make you feel not knowing what 2 plus 2 is equal to? <laughs> <laughs> then he speaks to the artist and he says to the artist, what is 2 plus 2? And the artist says, huh? Isn't it a beautiful day? <laughs> <laughs> then he speaks to the social scientist. And he says to the social scientist, what is 2 plus 2? And the social scientist says, I've got no idea. But I'm so happy we got a chance to discuss it. <laughs> <laughs> then he says to the accountant, what is 2 plus 2? And the accountant looks a little bit that way, looks a little bit that way, and then he says, what do you want 2 plus 2 to be? <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys, that's it for today. I'll see you tomorrow.